G'day guys, Socket here. I originally shared with you a tutorial on all pass filters and that was super well received. So thank you very much for your uh, comment and questions. Um, but it was pretty clear that uh, a few of you guys don't have DSPs that um, uh, support all pass filters. And uh, there was a range of other questions about things like what is the first, second order of all pass filters? You know, what is the, uh, the, the phase slider used for in um, some of the DSPs? So I thought I'd make a video to cover a lot of those topics, including you know how to uh, put in some all pass filters using uh, garden variety EQ filters um, if your DSP doesn't support uh, all pass filter functionality. Um, so for all of that and more, I thought uh, we'd make today's tutorial. Um, so strap on in, let's go take a look. So the first topic I'd like to cover with you guys is the difference between a second uh, order all pass filter and a first order all pass filter. Now this question was uh, asked by Matt who's a regular viewer and an all round nice guy. Um, but the reason I didn't cover this in the tutorials is because um, in REW it uses a second order all pass filter and in most DSPs they use second order. Um, first order all pass filters are fairly rare um, but for completion uh, I'll, I'll take you through uh, the difference between the two and to do that we'll jump into the uh, trusty old Helix DSP. So here in the Helix DSP if you go to the EQ section and you select uh, all pass filters all pass filters there we go it gives you the option to use either a second order or a first order uh, all pass filter. So let's say I put in an all pass filter at 500 and uh, you know I make it a Q of 5 or something. Um, then we get the, uh, the familiar all pass filter shape that we uh, you know, saw in the tutorials where the you know, phase sort of splits and we have the phase going 180 degrees in that direction and 180 degrees in that direction. Yeah? And you know, we have the ability to you know, move that by changing the frequency or changing the number of, um, of uh, frequency bands it affects by changing the Q value. Right? Um, but with a first order or pass filter, um, it, uh, the first thing you'll notice is it doesn't have a Q value. Uh, it's uh, just a single um, f uh, gradual phase change uh, around uh, the center frequency that you select. So at the moment, this is you know a phase change around 1,000. You know I can once again move that to you know 500 hertz, and now the phase change will be around 500 hertz. But instead of being a you know a phase split um, one way than the other, the phase gradually changes. Um, uh, by about a 90 degree phase shift this way and a 90 degree phase shift that way. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's a different form of um, all pass filter. Uh, but I you know the, I think the reason that second order filters are used is because they're um, a lot more flexible. Now if you're not too sure, you know if you're in REW or you're in your own uh, DSP and you're not too sure whether the the, uh, the all pass is a first or second order and let's jump into REW quickly and I go into the EQ tool here right and um, you know I go into my filters and I select all pass filter and I go oh I'm wondering if this all pass is a first or second order well the difference is uh, uh, pretty pretty easy to work out if it has a Q value where you can enter a Q value, it'll be a second order. If it does not, it only has a frequency, then you're using a first order or pass filter. Um, yeah, so uh, that is the difference between the two, and I hope that helps. So guys, while we're here in the DSP, I just want to show you a feature that is in the uh, Helix or pass EQ tool, um, and that is this little button called invert. And so what that does is it will flip the shape of the all pass filter, you know, um, you know, almost like a mirror image, right? And this is uh, useful uh, for um, being able to sort of push your phase lines in a certain way. And so let me explain. So if we go into REW and um, you know, and I pull up a graph with an in, uh, sorry, a, an all pass filter that I've put in here at 200 hertz with a you know Q of threes, you know, so here. Uh, as we covered in the tutorial, when you put a, um, an all-pass filter in, it pushes the phase um, in a certain direction, right? So, you know, if I flick this on and off, 
right, you can see that uh, to the right of the all pass filter, the phase moves from the blue line to the red line. So this is the the original, and this is with the all pass filter in. The phase has moved to the right, and on the left hand side of the all pass filter, the phase is moving to the left. Um, well, the value in that little inverse tab uh, button is that you can uh, flip the direction of this phase movement, right? So instead of the phase moving to the right, the phase will move to the left and vice versa. So this could be handy when, you know, you're trying to get the, you know, the predicted phase line to line up with another speaker, you know, those phase lines, and you want it to move this way instead of that. Well, you can use inverted um, all pass filters to get the phase to shift in the direction that you want. Um, now you can't simulate that in REW. REW doesn't have um, the, it just has an all pass filter, like a standard all pass filter. Um, it doesn't allow you to uh, flip the uh, flip the all pass filter around, but it's a handy little advanced feature in the um, Audio Tech Fisher DSPs. I'm not sure if other DSPs has it, you know, Moscone or Audison or you know whatever jail, um, yeah, not not hundred percent sure. But if you have that little invert button, um, that's what it is and that's what it does. So the next uh, feature I'd like to share with you is this uh, phase polarity slider that you um, find not only in the Audio Tech Fisher DSPs but in many other DSPs as well. Um, and so this question was uh, raised by Eddie. Um, who's uh, another uh, regular viewer and all-round top guy as well. Um, and so let me uh, show you what this phase polarity slider thing does. Um, you know, so uh, if I just move it and drag it across, um, you'll probably recognize straight away the familiar all-pass filter shape. And that is exactly what the, uh, you know, what the slider is. It's basically a uh, all-pass filter that you can drag around I'm not sure, sure what type of cue it has. I don't think you can change the cue. Um, it looks to me like it's a, uh, a with a cue of one, something like that. But it allows you to sort of, you know, on the fly change the, 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 the phase and polarity, you know, kind of like this. And so why is that valuable? Um, well, let's say that we've got um, you know, a speaker with a phase plot that's like this. And you know we're on the uh, on the left mid, and you know we want to use this to try to get the phase lined up between two speakers, right? So I can you know kind of drag it like this, you know, and you know, okay, I've got that one kind of lined up. This one's not ideal yet, but um, yeah. So you know that's the idea of the phase slider is that you're able to you know kind of use. Uh, well, let's um, turn this off. Sorry. Sorry if it's a bit confusing, guys. Here we go. That's better. So let's say I've adjusted my right mid, uh, sorry, my left mid, and I've put 213 degrees of phase shift on it. And then I go over to my, you know, to my right mid, and then I can use this one to sort of, you know, get these two kind of lined up. And I'll add, uh, you know, 213 to that one. But of course, it won't be because, uh, you know, it'll be a different speaker at a different position or whatever. But uh, that's the idea: is that between you know, uh, using the phase shifter on, for example, the left and right, that you might be able to get your phase lined up. And if you're trying to do this, um, uh, you can just click these little, um, highlight these little phase um, buttons over here, and you know you can muck around with that in the uh, in the DSP display. Like I said, this is the way it works with the Audio Tech Fisher, um, but may not work this way with other DSPs if it ha if your DSP has this feature. Um, but uh, just a couple of words about the phase polarity slider. Um, it, it only works with high frequency drivers and subs, right? So you know, if I click on my tweeters, you know, it works. The bids work. The you know subwoofers work. You know, that's all fine. Um, but it does not work for low frequency drivers. You know, so if you've got the word low in your um, in your speaker description. Uh, you know, so front low, uh, right low, um, you'll notice that it doesn't have this ability, right? I'll just turn those off for a minute. It doesn't have, the slider doesn't work. Um, I'm not too sure why, I think it's something to do with, you know, very low frequencies, you know, um, there's fewer phase wraps and, you know, 
tuners probably use polarity flips or other things to you know line up but you know that then again the you know the subs a low frequency driver and you know you have you have the um the polarity slider available for that right so if i turn on the phase here you know you can see i can move that around I, and i'm guess that's because you know if you're using multiple subs you know this phase slider might come in handy yeah so it's a design decision by audio tech fisher to um you know not include that for your uh, mid bass drivers um the uh it also doesn't work for your rear drivers right um but for you know uh, there is a way around it. Um, if you uh, have a look at your I/O settings, um, and you go into your outputs, uh, here are your um, tweeters, your mids, and your mid bass, right? But if you change the name of your mid bass from, for example, front left low to, I don't know, uh, rear left mid, something like that, um, and your front right low to rear uh, right mid and we're just changing the labels on the speaker nothing's um, nothing's really uh, changed um, so there's my mid here's my re renamed um, uh, my renamed mid base right uh, so I've got tweeters my mids you know and here are my new renamed um, mid base uh, and so now I've got the slider working, right? Um, yeah, so you know, that's a little hack to get around that if you really want to use the uh, the phased shifter slider on your on your mid bass speakers So what's my personal opinion about this phase slider and this tool? Um, well, you know, as I said in the tutorial, I'm not a, a big fan of all pass filters. I don't use them very much um, in uh, my tuning work uh, I use other techniques to get things in phase in particular you know um, uh, using delays and other stuff as you've seen in uh, many of my tuning uh, tutorials but you know it's a tool and I'm sure um, it can come in handy uh, particularly when you're trying to you know smooth out those bumps and dips in um, you know your paired speaker responses uh, but you know it's it's there it's another tool in our little toolbox so um, you know even though I don't use it very much it shouldn't stop you from having a play around with it and seeing if it works for you so the last topic I'd like to cover with you guys um, was raised by Bugman in the comment who said hey socket you know I've got a DSP but it doesn't have all pass filter functionality in it you know is there a way that I can you know, you know use it somehow to put in some all pass filters because I'd like to do some experimenting and things and so um, you know I did a bit of research on this topic and um, there is a technique uh, you know where you basically mirror your EQ um, you know your EQ filters uh, to try to get a phase shift while minimizing the uh, effect on magnitude. Um, so uh, I tried it out and it does work. Um, it's a little bit clunky, but um, certainly uh, you know, one way of uh, putting in some um, phase changes uh, without um, having an all pass filter. Um, and so the way it works is uh, like this. So let's take a parametric EQ, you know, a parametric EQ filter. Um, here we go and I'm going to put one in at 500 and you know as always you know I'm going to put in a, you know, a 6 dB cut and a uh, you know, Q of 6 right something like that and so with a normal EQ filter you know we're we're adding that 6 dB cut because you know we might have a peak there and we want to you know cut that out um, but what the uh, EQ filter does is not only affect the magnitude or the volume of the signal a speaker response at that frequency, but it also affects the phase, right? So this is a 6 dB cut, and we're getting you know a 17 to you know 19, you know about a um, a 40 degree change in the uh, phase, right? as a result of that EQ filter. Um, but wouldn't it be great if we could get the phase change without this magnitude change? And that's essentially what an all-pass filter does, right? Um, and so one way to kind of do that is to uh, take a second um, EQ filter at 500 hertz. And the first one was um, minus six, but this time I'm gonna throw in you know, a plus six. 
and um, you know, and I think the first queue we put on was a six. Um, so if I put the identical um, settings, you know, I get it cancels out, right? The first filter cancels out the second filter, which is not really what we want. But if I change the Q factor by a little bit, and let's say make it a 12, um, okay, well now what I get is a little change in the phase, you know, so it's five to six, and it's probably a 12 degree phase shift. Um, but I do get a little ripple in the uh, magnitude, but it's, you know, one and a half, maybe two dB, little ripple. Um, you know, so it is possible to kind of offset the magnitude change and still get a phase change, right? By, you know, mirroring um, e uh, these filters. And, you know, you can kind of have a bit of a play around with it. Instead of, you know, six, maybe I'll make, instead of 12, maybe I'll make this a, you know, a 15, you know. Okay, now I get a little bit, a little bit more of a filtered, uh, a phase shift, you know, maybe I make this a 12 and I'll put negative uh, 12 on the other side, right? Okay, now I get a much bigger phase shift. I've got, uh, you know, 11 and you know, I've probably got a 25 degrees phase shift. Um, yes, you know, I've now got a 4 dB ripple in my, um, in my magnitude. Probably not something that I want. Um, but yeah, you can play around with it. You can, you know, add and stack filters, you know, so I go and maybe 500. I'm going to put another one at uh, 520, you know, minus 6 with, a, you know, an 8. And another one here at 520, you know, plus 6 with a, you know, a 10 or something. All right. So, you know, you can, you can play around with these different settings with, um, chain, yeah, stacking filters together, playing around with your Q factors, playing around with the you know the level of gains, and the whole idea is to try to get the minimum amount of um, magnitude change with a, a decent amount of um, phase change, and it might be just enough uh, to help you smooth out um, some issues in between your uh, speaker pairs, right? Um, so guys, uh, I hope that's helpful, Bugman. Um, uh, I did look at a couple of other techniques that uh, didn't really work at all, um, but this seems to be, you know, one that works. And you know, I tried it out on a couple of speakers, and um, yeah, it seemed to have have the right effect. Um, not super pretty, uh, pretty clunky, but um, certainly one option. So there you go, guys. This brings us to the end of this um, pro tip uh, little tutorial. Um, it, uh, as I said, it's really just a grab bag of things uh, to answer some of the questions that you guys have popped down in the comments. Um, uh, some of them, I think, uh, you know, handy. Some of them are things you can just go and have a play with and see whether they work for you. But um, yeah. Anyway, I thought I'd just share. So guys, once again, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know uh, if you've got any other questions or comments, uh, whether it's about all pass filters or anything else to do with car audio tuning, you know, please throw them down below. I'll do my best to get back to them. And as always, I'll catch you in the next episode.